right here, to tell you the truth, is actually another result of uh, propaganda backfiring. You're disrupting traffic, idiots. You can't do that. That's against the law. Backfiring against the current establishment is basically what I'm trying to say. So that right there was Joe Biden once again playing politics, like a lot of politicians do. It really bugs me, however, when Democrats decide to go into a church and decide to do an event, especially seeing how it is that they're pro-abortion, seeing how it is that they are pro-gay marriage, seeing how it is that they are pro a certain alphabet agenda, which also equates to certain parts of that agenda doing something else that's also the exact opposite of what Christianity preaches, seeing how it is that 45% have said that in lifestyle, uh, I'm just going to leave this right here. Uh, it completely contradicts anything and everything that Christianity stands for. However, this video is not so much about that. What this video is about is, well, let's just say more and more people protesting in the road. You're disrupting traffic, idiots. You can't do that. That's against the law. Now, this guy right here obviously woke up, and don't worry, we'll play the rest of it here in a second in the actual news report, but obviously, the uh, let's just say the propaganda is obviously backfiring. Now, what propaganda am I talking about? Well, I'm talking about the internet propaganda that constantly flies around here on YouTube from leftist organizations and leftist groups, leftist channels who are very, very pro-Hamas. They'll tell you that they're pro-Palestine or they're pro the free Palestine movement, but in reality, they're really just pro-Hamas. The more and more and more you actually go into the rabbit hole, you actually find out that these people are, in fact, very, very much pro the terrorist organization. But still... We're going to let that one fly just for the time just for the time being. So yesterday I released a video on Eric Adams and of course Eric Adams in the city of New York, the state of New York. They're suing all these bus companies. Some of these companies by the way are um, nonprofits uh, over the immigration crisis. And of course they're also suing Texas as well as the DOJ. Basically what they want is uh, they want Texas to flip the bill on all the immigration uh, issues, but of course, uh, the thing is that these places are sanctuary cities, so therefore, the only thing Greg Abbott did was do something that's not exactly in the uh, Commerce Clause of the Constitution, which means that uh, he can do pretty much what he wants on this, and uh, he basically sent these people to these blue cities. Chicago, of course, were waiting on their lawsuit as well. And to go on top of that, you also have the current administration, which is being headed up by Joe Biden, who many people believe is going to be removed in 2024. Don't worry, that video will be coming out on Wednesday explaining why that probably won't be the case. Uh, but still, as you guys can see, Biden is being protested at an event, which, of course, he chose to use as a campaign stop to rail against 6-1. Got to say it that way for the algorithm. And Trump voters and Trump supporters trying to tie them to Dylan Roof, the guy who perpetrated the act down at that church back in 2015, killing nine people, nine black people. And, of course, we're trying to play politics once again. But, obviously, I don't think people really and truly care about that, especially given the fact that you've got people all over the place blocking the road, keeping good old-fashioned people from getting to go see their daughter, pick them up from school, pick up family, relatives from hospitals, you know, the very, very important stuff, just interrupting everyone's daily lives, as you will see here. You're disrupting traffic, idiots. You can't do that. That's against the law. Oh 
Now, this guy right here obviously had had it, but of course, there are a couple of news reports to get to. So, before I get to those news reports, I just want to say this right here. If you actually lock the people up, actually arrest them for what they do, of course, that there being something illegal, like, say, blocking the road, blocking traffic, if you actually arrest these people and then turn right back around and actually lock them up for a little bit, chances are this type of stuff will stop. But once again, we're living in a time where people are, quite frankly, ill-informed or not informed. Make sure you guys pay very, very close attention to the very, very next two minutes and two seconds, and especially on the final 15 seconds of this clip. Palestinian demonstrators blocked the Holland Tunnel, Brooklyn Bridge, and the Manhattan Bridge this morning. CBS News' Jessica Moore is live at the Manhattan Bridge with the latest there. And Jessica, the bridge is now clear. Mary, it is. Police tell me, in fact, all locations around the city are now clear, but this was a massive demonstration. Hundreds of people blocking traffic in and out of Manhattan. Here at the Manhattan Bridge, we saw people chaining ramming devices to their arms that had to be cut off with buzz saws as they were arrested. And one of the women here tells me that's to make sure that they blocked as much traffic as possible. It all started around 10 o'clock this morning. A coordinated protest blocking bridges and tunnels. Video shows demonstrators sitting at the entrance to the Brooklyn Bridge. It was the same scene at the Holland Tunnel where Port Authority police arrested dozens who blocked the tunnel's entrance. We saw dozens more arrests here at the Manhattan Bridge. NYPD officers mobilized to the bases of the bridges, dispatching officers from headquarters to all three locations. Police say things were mostly peaceful, but they caused major disruptions to drivers. Well, I think as the violence escalates, we have to make our message known and uh, it's not coming from the top so the people are sending the message after all it is our tax dollars to an israeli who's essentially fighting for justice for all people correct yes i'm an anti-zionist jew and i know from my history of being jewish and the history of the holocaust that we will not allow this to happen again when we say never again we mean never again for everyone of course, yesterday marks three months since Hamas attacked Israel and then Israel invaded Gaza in response. People here say they plan to escalate the demonstrations until there is a complete ceasefire. We did meet one man out here, a single man holding an Israeli flag. He said he was on his way to work, couldn't get across the Manhattan Bridge. He's been to several of these demonstrations, pulled the flag out of his trunk and stood out here. He tells me that the protesters or demonstrators are just uninformed. You see, the city of New York has a lot of, uh, let's just say, people who have ties to Israel. Chicago does. Miami does. A lot of big cities do. And by the way, I'm not saying this to knock anyone. As a matter of fact, YouTube's probably looking to put the yellow dollar sign on this video. And of course, that right there would also limit the ads in the video. But I'm not saying this to insult anyone. I'm just simply here to say that a lot of people have been misinformed, ill-informed, mostly by the online media. And of course, this also includes the mainstream media. MSNBC is obviously the biggest perpetrator, in my opinion, of giving out uh, massive loads of uh, misinformation. But of course, in the video that I did on Shepard Smith, and of course the time that he basically caused a panic or tried to cause a panic during Hurricane Matthew back in 2016, uh, there was a guy who pointed something out about the national media. You see, normally the local media, the media that's on the ground, even if it has a bias to the left or to the right, whatever, it typically tends to get the information a little bit uh, out. It tends to get the information out there a little bit more accurately. The reason why is because those people are actually on the ground. The national media oftentimes shows up and they're on the ground as well but not so much as far as the local media, who typically tends to be the first ones there. There was one segment there where a woman talked about somebody's hands being basically put together or kind of running through, didn't really care. This, of course, is not uncommon. I remember when I went to the Law Enforcement Academy the first time in 2014, not 2015, this was before I sustained the injury that forced me to go back in 2015. We had a cop from New Jersey uh, explain that it was a situation where a bunch of protesters were out there and they basically put their hands inside of... Well, basically what it was is that they used um, concrete or it was wood, something like that, to kind of hold their hands in place. They were doing a protest similar to that. Very, very brief, kind of hazy. But he said that the police department didn't care if the, because see, what they did was they eventually brought chainsaws to kind of break through. And if somebody's hand was in the way, then obviously they didn't care. Now, somebody's probably asking the question right now, why in the world would a New Jersey cop being a North Carolina uh, facility learning law enforcement? Well, you see, when you 
leave one state and go to another or you transfer over to the police department, especially if it's state to state, there may be some courses that you may be required to take in the basic law enforcement training uh, to get certified for said state. It's kind of weird, but don't worry, we may explain that at a later date. But still, the thing is this right here. Some police departments don't really care. However, in the case of New York, it seems about the NYPD is, a uh, let's just say, uh, they're a little bit restrained in this. Now, I'm going to play one more news report for you guys, but I want you guys to understand that a lot of these people are out here protesting in the street. They are showing you that they have pretty much no souls. The reason why is because most people would understand that people have got to get to work. People may have relatives in hospitals. What if this guy needed to uh, take a family member to the hospital or somewhere very important? You see, these people are showing you that they don't really care about anything, and they've turned into basically mindless droogs, mindless zombies, or like I like to call them, the infected. Demonstrators block some of the main ways out of Manhattan, creating a traffic nightmare. The Brooklyn Bridge, the Manhattan Bridge, the Williamsburg Bridge, and the Holland Tunnel, all briefly shut down by protesters. They've all been reopened now. At least 120 protesters were arrested at the Holland Tunnel alone after they blocked the New Jersey-bound passage. And just look at this. This was the scene at all four of those locations right around 930 this morning. A chaotic scene across Manhattan. Eyewitnesses report along Glassburg live at the Brooklyn Bridge with the very latest. Lauren. Yeah, David and Charlene, we are on the Manhattan side of the Brooklyn Bridge, and uh, traffic was uh, allowed to finally pass through about 45 minutes ago. And you take a look behind me, and there's really no sign that there was a protest here earlier today blocking all those cars. That protest, again, as you said, targeting three bridges and one tunnel. Let's take a look at the Holland Tunnel now. It was blocked by a line of people. They actually blocked a number of areas from Canal to Hudson Street. That caused backup of cars on Canal and Hudson Street and over to the West Side Highway. This happened at about 9.30, 10 this morning. And less than an hour later, police were able to move in and make arrests. We understand that they made 120 arrests, 120 people arrested just at the Holland Tunnel, and that tunnel has reopened since. It was also a similar situation over at the Williamsburg Bridge, where cars could not get across because of protesters there. In fact, at the Williamsburg Bridge, protesters, we understand, locked themselves to the bridge and had to be cut free by police before they were arrested over there at the Williamsburg Bridge. And all of this was really frustrating to drivers. We saw one incident where a driver really had no patience for the protests and just wanted to get where he was going. And we heard from some drivers who were frustrated by the impact this was having on their commute. I got to pay rent. I got to go to work. I got a mouth to feed, a young son. I can't do anything about Netanyahu and his war. I would like them to move. This is wrong. This is crazy. People are going to lose their jobs behind this. I'm one of them. I live in Williamsburg. I can't even get home. And the Manhattan and Brooklyn bridges also closed by traffic by protesters. Tr closed to traffic by protesters. Both have since reopened. Again, this was a pro-Palestinian protest, a call for Israel to end its war on Hamas. Israel has, by the way, scaled back its uh, its battling uh, even in the last day, but it has st is still looking to destroy Hamas after the October 7th attack in Israel. Hamas still holding more than 150 people. So that is the latest. All the bridges and the tunnel finally reopened. As you guys can see, some people are obviously getting arrested. But once again, the infected have, in fact, taken over. Now, why in the world have the infected taken over? Well, it's because they have been, like I said before, they have been manipulated by the mass media. That right there being the mainstream media and, of course, the leftist talking shows that, quite frankly, they listen to all the time. Groups like TYT. Vosh, Destiny, which I don't think Destiny's like pro Hamas or anything. I've actually watched him kind of, but still at the same time, don't don't think this is a praise of him. I still don't like that guy. But still, though, at the same time, when you sit around and you lift this, you listen to leftist propaganda and leftist BS all day. After a while, guess what? You're probably going to fall into that echo chamber, 
And you're probably going to do stupid crap like this. You see, a lot of these people have been radicalized into thinking that uh, they're going to be fighting in some form of left-wing revolution against the uh, totalitarian American state or something like that. However, they've been radicalized by a bunch of idiots that, quite frankly, have never left their bedroom and more than likely will not leave their bedroom. Now, I can already hear somebody saying where well, you're talking to a telephone or a camera phone and using a probably a Rode microphone, which is a Rode microphone. Why in the world are you any different? Well, because I actually get up and go do things. And of course, I still do things during the day. It's not like I can just make these videos at the whim. Whereas someone like, say, a Destiny of Osh or Hassan Piker sit right behind their computer all day and all night and just spew out crap. I mean, literal crap actually comes out of their system, not going out the main hole, but actually coming back up through the pie hole, as I'm kind of demonstrating with my hands. The fact of the matter is these people have been given pure raw sewage, and they have digested that raw sewage, and this right here is a result of them digesting all that raw sewage. Of course, when they find out that the raw sewage is in fact crap and that they've been lied to the entire time, it's probably going to lead to some form of reckoning. And I think that these people are already being given that said reckoning. Now, guys, there's a video that's going to be coming out on Wednesday. It's going to be relatively long to explain. It's really more of a reaction to another content creator. Yeah, I'm looking at you, Tim, who was talking about the current administration, Joe Biden being pulled off the ballot, and then, of course, eventually inserting Gavin Newsom or Michelle Obama. It's 2024. You're going to hear a lot of politics, a lot of political takes. And of course, I need to do a video kind of debunking that, kind of explaining why it more than likely will not occur, why it is that they may be stuck with him. Now, do any of these protesters look to you like they're going to be going out there and supporting the current regime, which has actually given billions of dollars to Iran, given billion dollars to the Palestinians, while at the same time still supporting the friend in Israel? I don't think so. I think a lot of these people are more inclined to stay home or probably protest on election night. By the way, if Trump wins in 2024, which I think he will, they'll also come out and protest then. We are not out of the woods with this entire or situation. It's not like one administration is going to fix anything. Fact of the matter is this right here. These people are loose cannons. They have been listening to and watching leftist propaganda for the longest amount of time. They've had their heads filled with all kinds of BS. They haven't gotten the full picture. And now they're making regular, normal people's lives a living hell, as you guys obviously saw with that gentleman at the very beginning. And now they're beginning to make people's lives a living hell at political events, which, by the way, those political events are events that the Democratic Party typically thrives off of because, of course, they got to pump up the white man, bad, orange man, bad narrative. And, of course, they love to prey on racial divisions or made up racial divisions to actually do that, going back to incidents that, quite frankly, are not what we call happy incident in our past. This is how these people are. And it looks to me like a lot of people are beginning to wake up and see that the current regime and the current people who peddle this nonsense aren't really and truly worth a damn. But what do you think happens when normal people eventually get involved? They eventually stand up and they say, we're not going to take it anymore. Let me ask you a question before I end this video. What do you think would have happened if more than just one or two people stepped outside the car? And we've seen videos of these people blocking roads. I mean, just, just out there protesting, whatever, because these people don't have jobs or in life. What do you think happens when people, maybe four or five, maybe more than that, actually begin to get out the car and start laying their hands on these people? As a matter of fact, after a while, it's going to get to the point where the cops are probably going to be forced to get involved to actually arrest these people. But then again, though, with all the George Poros prosecutors out there, I really truly don't know what's going to happen. After a while, people are going to begin to get tired of it, and they're going to begin to see that the current regime is not doing a single thing about it. I mean, dude, pass a law. Even Republicans in Congress will go along with you on a law saying, hey, maybe we should ban all these protests in the streets. Maybe we should arrest these people who step out in the middle of the street and begin to protest. You're wrecking normal people's lives. That right there is what you're doing. Maybe a law should be passed like that right there. Maybe something like that should be outlawed. Do you guys kind of see what I'm saying? You are wrecking normal, everyday American lives. And of course, people are in fact getting fed up because of it. And they are now starting to respond. Which, once again, leads me to the whole consensus that the entire mainstream media apparatus, the entire liberal media complex, or industrial complex, as Mark Dice calls it, they are starting to see at this moment in time that, yeah, this propaganda is not working out and people are beginning to wake up or people are beginning to get angry about the fact that nothing is getting done. But let me know what you guys think in the comments section. With that right there being said, make sure you guys please hit the like button, subscribe, share the video, sign off in the comment section. I do have another video that is set to come out tomorrow. I'm going to try to get it released. It's also going to be a bit of a replacement. I'm probably going to move the how the media manipulates uh, 
using the pro wrestling mount. I'm probably going to move it down to Saturday. Uh, so make sure you guys stick around for that. But I'll be posting a lot more. I'll look, probably the content is going to be relatively uh, active this week. So make sure you guys stick around. Still, though, please make sure you guys let me know what you think. Please hit the like button, subscribe, share the video, sound off in the comments section.